Well, tonight, the future is now. A new artificial intelligence chatbot, ChatGPT, has fascinated and terrified the internet with its incredible writing ability. From essays to news articles, even complex computer codes, this thing is scary good. So as a test, the show asked it to write a poem about this show and see what it would come up with. Well, an instant later, and I mean an instant, this is what I came up with. Check it out. In the CNN newsroom with Pamela Brown, a steady voice that carries through the town, she brings us news from near and far, informing us with her journalistic charm. I don't know about how true that is, but about the journalistic charm, but that's pretty impressive that it just shot that out so quickly. So the question is, are we ready for this brave new world? Let's discuss with author and futurist Ian Kahn. All right, so let's dive right into it, both the promises and perils of this technology. I want to start, though, with, with the good here. Um, make the case for how chatbots like ChatGPT GPT can improve our lives. So Pamela, chat GPT changes things because now we have fed so much data or they have fed so much data to artificial intelligence that now it's able to learn faster, which means we can do things at a higher speed, which means we can find solutions to problems and um, uh, solutions and vaccines for diseases faster. That's literally the great news about it, that we're making progress in artificial intelligence. All right. So as you know, this technology, it's also prompting a lot of concerns. Look, the idea that it could like help us cure diseases, that's that's amazing. But there's also concern about, you know, it could become a tool for misinformation, that it could be used to write college essays. Um, will it replace programmers, teachers, dare I say, TV hosts? How serious do you take these concerns? So these concerns are genuine, and uh, honestly, uh, ChatGPT is going to spew out whatever question you ask it. It's going to give you the answers, whether it's an essay, a letter, uh, poetry, whatever you give it, you ask it, it's going to give you the answers. And that's that can be a good thing and a bad thing because it's so new to us. Uh, that's why everybody's finding it intriguing, exciting, and at the same time, it's a bit scary as well. But we need controls, and those controls have to come from universities, institutions, organizations, because it's just a machine at the end of the day. It's just technology that's finding these keywords out of uh, billions and billions of keywords and putting them together based on some logic. It has no intelligence of its own. It's not a sentient AI. It's just an artificial machine that's just putting one and one together without knowing what it means. Hmm. All right, so let's talk about another artificial intelligence that a lot of our viewers probably saw on their social media feeds this week. I, I, I remember when I saw it, I was like, what is this? It's a digital art generated Linza AI, and it's one of the top apps in the world right now. You can have AI create artistic portraits of you by giving it several selfies. So I downloaded it today. Let's put ours on the screen. You've also done it. Pretty cool. Uh, I, although I will say yours looks a lot more like you than I think mine looks like me. <laughs> but the bottom so, line here, th that debate aside, unless you want to weigh in, there are problems, right? There, there is privacy concerns about giving apps this kind of information. Uh, and there are also yeah. concerns by artists who are saying that technology is profiting from learning their style and copying it. What's your take? Pamela, we are we are literally in the golden age of technology where we're making progress, but we haven't become a civilization that's going to live on Mars anytime soon. Having said that, this is a great step that computers are able to generate imagery. This is going to pay way for the creator economy because guess what? People and their creativity is still needed and computers and technology cannot do it. I really like what Lenza does. It does a great job at taking these millions of designs and taking your and my picture and people's pictures and and putting out portraits of them amazing but this is this is very small in terms of automation of technology and putting one and one together i think it's going to create more opportunities for us to think uh you know it cannot replace a picasso a picasso mm -hmm. will always be a picasso and lenza ai art will always be lenza ai art so we have to take that with a bit of uh, a pinch of salt
Yeah, um, you're absolutely right. That's such an important point. I can't get over how much yours looks so much like you. Um, it, it's really remarkable. I will say there was one picture it showed with huge bags under my eyes. I was like, Linza, I do not like this. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's sometimes too realistic. But anyway, Ian Khan, thank you for that conversation. We appreciate it.